So that when you develop that love of, of Quran, of contemplation, of study, then the way you're going to start talking about it, you don't have, you're, you're not going to have to take some course on public speaking or how do I, you know, you're not, your aim is not to become a public speaker. The idea is you should be able to speak passionately about something that inspires you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم هو الذي بعث في الأمين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين رب الشحل صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد once again everybody السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته uh, before I go on I really want to appreciate the energy of the audience ما شاء الله you guys are making me really happy الحمد لله may Allah preserve all of you protect you and uh, grow you in your own relationship with the Quran and make you a people of تدبر and of study of the Quran that brings light to every part of your life. And may Allah make your learning of the Qur'an easier and easier and easier for you and just guide you in every decision you make in your lives. Okay, anyway, so it also makes me really happy to see so many young people. This is an unusually high concentration of youth. Alhamdulillah. So that means that, you know, Europe's got some spark. MashaAllah. Um, actually, before I start, one of the, one of the, the hopes I have one of the real dreams that I have for European Muslim communities, which I think can bring so much khair for generations, is that uh, I want to see youth emerge, men and women emerge from here that are well accomplished in their own careers. So they're whether they're MBAs, engineers, doctors, whatever they are, they are. But at the same time, they're very well educated in Allah's book at the same time. And they're articulate enough that they can actually speak intelligently about Allah's book from Fatiha to Nas. They can do that. And that's not an impossible task. Just, to, you know, you don't have to become a scholar in every field of Islam, but we have to generalize at least the minimum, bare minimum knowledge of Islam, which to me is the word of Allah, is the starting point knowledge of Islam. Because this is where Islam literally started. It started with this, right? And... I would wish that every Ramadan and every year there's actually even series durus going on and not even done by the, the, the shuyukh, but under the guidance of the scholars and the imams. But the young men and women are actually creating their own study circles where they're actually going through the entire Quran. And they're studying the entire, and they're able to speak articulately about the Quran and share lessons from the Quran. And every year they can deepen their own learning and help others deepen their learning of the Quran. Because reading... Reading a translation of the Qur'an is a completely different experience than sitting and listening to the Qur'an being explained. They are worlds apart. And the more you feel passionate about the Qur'an, the more passionately you'll be able to speak about the Qur'an. And that passion is infectious. You know, you see people talk about sports that love sports. And you just, even if you don't like sports, you want to listen to the guy. Because they love it so much. The way they talk about it, like, I want to hear what this is. You know? And there are people that, that love cars and they love whatever subject, and the, just the way they speak about it, it just oozes out of them, right? So that when you develop that love of, of Qur'an, of contemplation, of study, then the way you're going to start talking about it, you don't have, you're, you're not going to have to take some course on public speaking, or how do I, you know, you're not, your aim is not to become a public speaker or a, an influencer. Most influencers are influenced or under the influence. But the... the, but the <laughs> But the, the, the idea isn't you want to become a public figure. The idea is you should be able to speak passionately about something that inspires you. That's all it is. And that, that can happen in your living room, with your friends, with your family. It doesn't have to be a TikTok page. It doesn't have to be like a YouTube video. Like that's not the only way to communicate with humanity. And unfortunately, now that's become almost like, you know, I, I, just, I want to become more uh, famous online. I want to give something. And I, I keep criticizing this idea. People become like makeup influencers online and workout influencers and nutrition influencers. And now the new thing among youth is I want to become a, a hijab influencer or a beard influencer. I don't know what the, what? Like an Islam influencer. But it's basically the desire isn't Islam. The desire, the, 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 the thing in capital letters is the influencer part, not the Islam part. 
right? This is, I really want, I love the attention. I love the engagement. I love the growing followers. I love the comments. But I love how you say, and for the sake of Allah, I want to give you guys some advice. This really good advice for you that I'm giving in my filtered camera. That's going to be really, really beneficial for you. And I'm just doing this for the sake of Allah, even though I'm going to keep checking the comments for the sake of Allah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> this is a, one of the most powerful ayat of the Quran describing the mission of the Prophet We're going to take it bit by bit and it doesn't matter how long it takes us for this ayah. We're going to give our due to this ayah. This ayah would be, in my opinion, if this surah is a building, the pillar that holds this entire building together is this ayah. This is the, this is the heart of the entire surah. Okay? Of the entire, entire surah. Anyway, he is the one who. هو الذي بعثا. So the surah, the ayah begins with he, referring to Allah. It didn't have to begin like that. It could just say, بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ He appointed among the unlettered a messenger among them. That's the phrase in the beginning. He raised, meaning Allah raised, among the unlettered people, the uneducated people, a messenger from among them. That's the phrase we're working on. But Allah said, He is the one who raised. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ This itnab, this reference to Allah in this way, is forcing us to go back and say, He's making us connect this ayah to the previous ayah. He introduced himself to us in the previous ayah. The one to whom everything does tasbih, because he is al-Malik al-Quddus, uh, al-Aziz al-Hakim, is the same one with those names and with everything doing tasbih of him. With that in mind, think about the fact that he appointed uh, a messenger among the unlettered people. The king of all kings raised a messenger among these people. But let's let's now focus on the word raised. Ba'atha. Ba'atha is used for ba'atha hum min naumihi, to raise somebody, to wake somebody up from their sleep. This is why it's used also for yawmul ba'ath, the day of waking up, meaning the day of resurrection, because death is a kind of sleep, right? So it, by extension, it became the day of resurrection. In ba'atha fissayr, you get up, sometimes you get up and you don't really get up. You know what I'm talking about? You get up and you're like, and in your mind, you're like, yes, I'm, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. Come on, get up. Yep, just okay. count to 50. Because five is too quick, right? Or if, if, you're, if your wife wakes up, before, okay, you turn the light on, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you're, you're not really up. But then sometimes you get up and you're just, you just like, you know, just get up. And that's called imbi'ath. al imbi'atha fi sayr when you rush and get up and you start walking quickly, you just jump with a spring in your step, that's imbi'ath. Um, now, uh, the word ba'atha, this is, is uh, it says on the title, ba'atha with and without varying preposition. So let me explain what this means. This, it's not so complicated. In English, you have a verb like give, right? But if you say give up, it's a totally different meaning, right? Uh, if I say give in, slightly different meaning. Right, So giving has a certain meaning, but giving up doesn't mean giving up. It means quitting. So when, you, when some verbs, when you add a preposition, up in this case, it completely changes the meaning of the word. You understand? It's, so language is kind of like chemistry in that sense. This was one element, give. When you added this other element, this other chemical, up, it created a reaction and a new meaning was created. This is why you cannot learn languages only from the dictionary. You know what give means, you know what up means, and when your friend comes to you and says, I give up on this friendship, you say, okay, well, I give down on this friendship then. <laughs> you think he's leveling up on the friendship or something, you know. Because you can't look at the dictionary and figure that out. You have to know that languages, a verb, an action comes with preposition sometimes, and then new meaning is created. The word ba'atha, which means to appoint or to raise, comes with a number of prepositions. It could be ba'atha ila, like in the Qur'an, ثُمَّ بَعَثْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ ثُمَّ بَعَثْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ رُسُلًا إِلَى قَوْمِهِمْ فَبْعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَرِخِكُمْ هَذِهِ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ بَعَثَ إِلَى بَعَثَ إِلَى بَعَثَ إِلَى which means send someone to you know, raise someone, appoint someone to do this mission. So if I say, for example, I choose you to go get my car or something like that. 
Then that's ba'atha ila. When I give somebody a job towards a task, okay? I choose someone for that. You know, sometimes a teacher in the classroom tells one of the students, okay, come up on the board and write this. This is al ba'ath ila. He's been chosen, get up, and now do this for the, towards this mission, okay? Now, then there's ba'atha ala. Ba'athna alaykum ibadillana. Another preposition with the same word. That means Allah chose someone or you, when, when you command someone to beat someone up. Like, I impose someone on you. Like if the police chief says, he sees some people that are, some teenagers that are making noise and the police officer says, you three, go take care of that. That's ba'athahum alayhim. He took them and he imposed them on those other people. Okay? So he made, so when you, when you assign someone to beat somebody up or to overpower somebody, to impose on somebody, right? That's ala. Like, you know, uh, if a general commands martial law on a nation and he's taking his army and he's doing ba'ath ala the population. Okay? So ba'ath al junud ala nas, ala sha'ab. Okay? Guys, sorry for the interruption in the middle of this lecture. Just before you continue, I want to let you know and encourage you that I want you to sign up for BayanaTV.com and help others sign up or even sponsor students for BayanaTV.com so we can create worldwide communities of students that are studying the meanings and the benefit and the wisdom of the Qur'an uh, and are inshallah ta'ala spreading that in their own circles. Thanks so much. Then there is fi, which is what's being used in this ayah. Huwallazi ba'atha fi. It's not ila. It's not ala. So if it was ila, that would mean the, mes the, mi the mission of the Prophet ﷺ is towards these people called the ummiyin, which we will discuss. That's the mission. Allah is sending you to them. But then, if it was ala, it would mean Allah is sending him as a punishment on them. That would be ala. But Allah didn't use ila, he didn't use ala, he used fi. Ba'atha fil ummiyin. Now what does fi do? Fi actually means to choose someone who will be within them. So he raises someone from within them. In other words, for example, uh, when you, when you uh, uh, choose a, a leader, but you don't choose a leader from the outside, you choose a leader from within the group. Ba'atha fil ummiyin actually means he raised up from within them from in their society, from in their families, from in their culture, within them, he was mixed with them. he ate with them, he, he, he interacted with them, he was friends with them, he was family with them, everybody knew him, he knew everybody. And he, he was a, a part of that society, and from within them he raised. So Ba'atha Fil Ummiyin is, you know what they call it, uh, embedded journalists, right? When, when you embed a journalist, they're living with the villagers, they're living with the soldiers, they're in the camp, they're not coming from the outside, they have to live in, right? So he, he, he's in, he not embedded, he was actually raised from within them. And this leads us to understand the difference between the word arsala, which is used for messengers, he sent messengers, and now he's saying he raised a messenger. When you say sent, that means sent from somewhere else. Right? The king used to send an announcer to make the announcement to the village, hear ye, all of you must pay double taxes. And then he would go away. He comes dressed differently. He comes dressed in the royal clothes. He comes on a royal horse. He comes with his soldiers and guards. He comes to the village, makes the announcement and goes away. That, that guy's job was to be a rasul, a messenger of the king. But he comes from the outside, right? Allah sends this messenger. He's a messenger of Allah. He's a messenger of the king of kings. But he didn't send him from outside. He raised him from within them. He raised them from within them. And this was Allah's unique kingdom where he doesn't need to send a messenger from the outside. He will choose a messenger from within that society. And this is a really powerful thing because Allah wanted his message to be understood by the people, not something that's being imposed on them. Allah could have sent an angel that would look scary and powerful and he would descend and he would recite some Quran on the people and everybody would like, oh, Yes. Okay, well, we just had an experience from God. Nobody mess with that. And just to, just to show you what we can do, if you mess with us, here, raise a mountain for them and drop it down. Next time it'll drop on you. And Allah has done that with the Israelites before. Like He raised the mountain above them like it was a shadow above them. 
He's done that already. He could have done that with the instead of sending Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and raising them from among him from among the people. He could have sent a messenger from the outside. He's got his base. His his angels are also called Rasul, by the way. Jibril is also a Rasul. Okay, a Rasulul Amin in the Quran. That's one of his names. So Allah could have sent him, but He says no. I, the King of Kings, decided to take among the unlettered people and raise among them a messenger. Raise among them. Meaning, okay, now there's two things. There's, you're raised among a people and you are from a people. So you are living among them is one thing and you are from them is another thing. I learned this, I don't, I'm not sure if it's true of you guys, but I learned this in my few days here in Germany. That sometimes you meet some Germans who might tell you that you may be born in Germany, you may have lived in Germany, you may speak German, you may have a German passport, but you're not really German. Okay. You may be you may be within us, you may be within us, but you're not from us. Okay? You may, you may be within us, but you're not from us. So there this may be a, a sentiment. Fee. You're, you're, you're fina, but you're not minna. You understand? That's one part. He's within them. But there's another part. Maybe even if you're within us, like Bilal was within them. Bilal used to live, live you know, in, in, in the region. He was in Mecca. So he is among them. He's within them. But they don't see him as what? From them. They see him as an outsider. They see him as, they don't, he's not from us. When do people accept a message more willingly? When a person is from within them and from them. Because people have bias. People are, this is not, how can we trust someone who's not really from us? He sounds like us, eats like us, drinks like us, you know, acts like us, but he's not really from us. It's not really. Well, but if someone is truly from you, then that becomes a much more acceptable messenger, isn't it? Allah says this is actually one of Allah's rules. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ Allah never sent a messenger except by the, in the language of His own people, their people. And lisan doesn't just mean language, lisan also means culture. Right? So the language and culture of, of those people, He understood their lingo, lingo. By the way, you could be from a people, like some of you may be from Turkish origin, Albanian origin, Somebody may be from Indonesian origin, Malaysian origin, and you are raised, your, 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 your dad or your grandpa moved to Germany and you've been here for a couple of generations. So even though you're from Albania, you're not in Albania. And even if you go back to the home country for a little bit, even though you're genetically from them, you don't feel like you fit. You're kind of weird. Like you sound funny when you talk their language and they sound, you know, you, you, you're like, wow, well, I want to go home. Okay. I miss Tutkat. <laughs> <laughs> then you come back, and you come back, and then you say, okay, you are, you are, you are fee us, but you're not min us. And when you go there, they say, you're min us, but you're not fee us. You're like, come on. <laughs> I'm split in half. Which, where do I belong? Where do I fit? Right? So this is... What a messenger is being sent who is within them and he's actually also from them. You know what that means? There's no excuse left for these people to be able to listen to him. For be, there's, no, there's no external factors that say, I, I don't know if I can relate to this man. He's just, he's giving some message that I can't even understand. I can't even relate to it. Because what does he know about our culture? What does he know about our family? You know, people say, oh, how can an outsider treat, teach us? So Allah says He sent him among the Ummiyin, from within them. And this is something Allah didn't have to do. Allah the King of Kings, Al-Aziz, Al-Malik, Al-Aziz, Allah didn't have to do that. Allah could send, He's Al-Quddus, He could send Ruh Al-Quddus Himself. You know, but Allah saw in His Hikmah that He wants this messenger to actually be raised from among, and now they see Him from His childhood. Yeah? When they see him from his childhood, and one day he decides to Allah decides to make him a messenger, they could say to him, Oh yeah, you're a messenger now? We saw what you were doing last year. We still have some recordings. You want me to play it for you? 
this is what you were doing last year. Remember five years ago at that party? But they know him since the beginning, don't they? And they know that his record is completely what? It's completely clean. When somebody makes a big claim like that, you would go after their background. Like, you know, Musa alayhi salam, when he came back and he declared that he's a prophet, Fir'aun said, oh, you? <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I kill people? You don't kill people? Did you do something? He threw it in his face, right? Because one of the reasons to reject Musa was he has something in his past. About Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says, وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونٍ You're the one who has lived among you this entire time is not insane. Allah tell them, I have lived my entire life with you. This is فِيكُمْ This is فِي of our فِلُمِّيِّين Okay, so that's a little bit, that, that's an important distinction. Now, Assalamu alaikum everyone. There are almost 50,000 students around the world that are interested on top of the students we have in studying the Quran and its meanings and being able to learn that and share that with family and friends. And they need sponsorships, which is not very expensive. So if you can help sponsor students on Bayina TV, please do so and visit our sponsorship page. I appreciate it so much and pray that Allah gives our mission success and we're able to share the meanings of the Quran and the beauty of it the world over.